I'm heading down to Boris Ali because, as usual, um, everybody around me has been plotting and uh, Joe and Mary and Paul this time have plotted to put this stove into the room divider. Now, the room divider doesn't need a stove because the house is going to be an A2 rated house. They won't need a stove. They will absolutely swelter. So they've said that, but they've said there's another thing that kind of looks like a stove, but it's not a stove. It's an electric stove. There's not really a flame. It's got steam coming out of it. It does loads of different tricks. And I'm thinking, oh God. But when is a stove not a stove? Well, apparently when it's not a stove. Well, isn't that a lovely picture? <laughs> <laughs> what are you scheming about now? <laughs> you I'm going to show you how to chocolate. Right. Very much. So these are stoves yes. that are not stoves, that are stoves, that are not stoves. That are stoves, that aren't stoves. That aren't stoves. And look at stoves. Why don't you put in just a wood burn? If you want to put in a stove, do you not put in a wood burning stove? No, we, we don't have a need for a wood burning stove. Well, no, I know, but yes. if you want... No, too much work attached to it. Maintenance. I'm the, I'm the cleaner here. I was never a fan of fake fires. I like a real flame, but they're not ever going to put in another stove again because there's too much maintenance in it. So how does it work? It's optimist. What's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's a mist. When it's below the timbers, it looks like flames. When it comes up above it, it looks like smoke. If you were to step away and kind of distance yourself from the fact that it's not a real wood burning stove and just get rid of that out of your head, if I can just park that, if I could, if I could just park that, I think it'll be a nice addition to the room. You'd set up a clothes horse in front of this, wouldn't you, Joe? I definitely would. This is the best thing. So the room divide, it does define the living area, doesn't it? And that was, that's, that was the purpose of it. I want to be able to walk in and see over it. Yes. And when you're in the kitchen, you can see over it. But when you're sitting down in there, this closes off the space. Yeah. This house, for me, in my head, was always about warm, cosy, warm, cosy. All the colours, all the textures, all the materials were always about creating this warm, cosy house. There was no point in me giving them a big open plan space that was cold and sterile. It would have never felt like home. <laughs> for me, the two key elements were the little pop-out extension at the back of the house and the garage. What I needed to do was make the two of those identical so that they became these bookends. So by putting two elements on either side, that meant it stretched out the bottom of the house. And then you tie them together with this band, a gray band connected to the extension on one side and the garage on the other side. And because they were lower, they then started to, to join the landscape. And your timber slats. So when somebody comes up to the front door, you've got a lovely window that looks out to see them, but they can't see you. It gives you that little bit of privacy. We're really, really thrilled with the house. It's absolutely way past our, our wildest dreams. Ah, look at that. That's what it was all about. It's magic. It is. It's absolutely fabulous. It's what it was all about. I can see that now. And you know what the amazing thing was, Jeremy? It was there, but we never saw it. Why didn't you see it? Because we were blinkered. We no, just you weren't blinkered. Just... What was parked in front of you? <laughs> <laughs> A beautiful car. <laughs> I can't believe I have what I have. It is beyond my wildest dreams, and I just think it is fabulous. Oh, I have man. to say, last yesterday evening I walked in at six o'clock. I was just blown away. I actually had tears in my eyes. I was Aww. so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Mary. Like when we started this project, I kept saying to Joe, you know, I want to pull this house into the 21st century. I mean, we've gone into the 22nd century with it. <laughs> the grooves. You weren't sure, were No, you? no. Uh, look, why have an architect if you're not going to trust them? So, I uh, really, That you was know, you trusting? That, yes, that was me Go trusting you. On <laughs> he never forced us into doing anything that we didn't want to do, but he had a way of bringing you around. And really, when you were walking away, you just knew he was right. There was just no two ways around it. He's right. Do you see now the, the method beyond my madness? Because there's loads of different sized doors here, but our grooves are the constant. The kitchen was going in against one wall. And in this space especially, because it's not huge, the kitchen couldn't be a big dominant piece of, of furniture. It needed to blend in. So by allowing the kitchen to form a wall, and then by introducing these vertical grooves, it meant that you could have these slats running the entire length and making it look unified. So the room divide. It does define the living area, doesn't it? And that was, that's, that was the purpose of it. I wanted to be able to walk in and see over it. Yes. And when you're in the kitchen, you can see over it. When you're sitting down in there, 
this closes off the space. This house, for me in my head, was always about warm, cosy, warm, cosy. All the colours, all the textures, all the materials were always about creating this warm, cosy house. There was no point in me giving them a big open plan space that was cold and sterile. It would have never felt like home.